Howa Ibrahim, lawyer from Nigeria. You've defended a great number of cases in the Sharia courts of Nigeria. How difficult is that? Because I think in the West we don't have a perception of how Sharia law works. The foundation of Islam is peace and justice and fairness. So my understanding of the Sharia is to enhance this foundation of Islam. Okay? Five new offenses were introduced and five new punishments were sort of introduced. And so these are the cases I found myself defending of women sentenced to die by stoning or children sentenced to have their limbs amputated. And the third component to it, which um, has to do with the same justice issue, is the component of the human right and the fundamental equality that Sharia provides. And so there is two things I want to say here. There is the law and there is the interpretation of the law. When you defended Shafir um, Husseini and Amin Lawal, who were both uh, sentenced to be stoned to death for, for adultery, you, you managed to get them off on substantive and procedural due process. Now, this sounds like you are actually interpreting Sharia in the way that it should be interpreted, and in some cases, the prosecutors were not. We, in, we try to work, and we still want to work within Sharia. You may say some people have reported that the justice was the technical justice we got, but it was within the Sharia. Now the theory where we, uh, we started the sleeping embryo theory, which is one of the uh, ground on which some of them got uh, discharged and acquitted, it is Sharia, it is a school of thought. In Maliki that says a woman can be pregnant for a minimum of six months. It may not be scientific, but it's a school of thought that is practice in the western region of the country, especially in the western region of Africa, but more in Nigeria. You, you mentioned that uh, it's the interpretation where there is sometimes problems. With that interpretation, as it is interpreted in some of the, I think it's 12 states in Nigeria, isn't it, that apply Sharia to one extent or another, um, does it come down especially against poor people or women as against the rest of society? You know, there is that feeling. I have been part of 150 cases, 57 actually, and all my clients share four attributes. They are poor, they are powerless, they are voiceless, and they are illiterate. We have not seen so much of the application of Sharia within, outside those four confines. And so that is of concern to anybody that, that wants to see a fair justice in any society. A justice should not be only be for a certain group of people and some people escape it. Uh, and so yes, you may be right that um, the interpretation of it has seems to be tilted uh, toward the powerless. It, it must be quite difficult to defend people because one assumes that in, in some places, I mean, obviously people support Sharia law because they are Muslims and presumably they want the Sharia law. But it must be hard to defend them and you must come up sometimes against male opposition, shall we say. I think it's harder on the clients. When you are faced with a sentence of death by stoning, it's harder on you. Uh, for, for me, it is more a privilege and I always have seen privileges, I mean, difficulties as opportunities. Uh, Yes, we have had issues where the man feels we, our mouth is too big and we, uh, we want to take over some few things, but that is not true. It's that the women from 50% of our society, come on, you want a sustainable development in any society? You need the women. You need to give them their fundamental basic right of freedom and equality and justice. You need to give them security. You need to allow them be. So we are not going out outside any confine per se. We are saying for us to have a society where the children of the men and the women will thrive. We need every hands on the deck. And we need the women to be recognized as they have what it takes to help build a society. And that's what we are for. Our Ibrahim, thank you very much indeed. Absolutely.